Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some big mistakes that new players might make. AFK Arena has been going hard with their advertising, so there's probably a bunch of new players coming into the game. So we're going to try and help them out with this one. I did make a video very similar to this about a year ago, but the game has a bunch more features. So it's going to include some of the same stuff from that previous video, but also a bunch of new stuff. So if you are an experienced player and you have any other mistakes for people to avoid, uh, leave them down in the comments i'll go through them and if there's a bunch of good ones i'll make a pinned comment that combines all the extra comments and then new players can go down there check it out and find some more useful information but without any more let's get into it first up we're going to look at the oak inn now the oak inn is very new to the game in the last few months um, and you unlock this around chapter four I believe it is you'll you'll see it you'll see it there it floats there once you unlock it and you can click on it however you cannot gain functionality and store heroes of your own here until you have an ascended hero however this little tab on the right hand side here will be open even if you don't have an ascended hero so make sure you go there don't ignore this feature go there every time and you'll have you can visit your friends houses three times per day uh, three different friends and you can collect goodies and as you can see this one is going to be 30 stones which is fantastic uh, you also have a chance to get 100 diamonds and you can also get 100 dust so there's another 30 stones so just just from those two clicks it's given me an extra fodder hero and there we go 100 diamonds now those are the two good ones you want to get sometimes you do get 100 dust which isn't as good but can still be handy especially for early game players but the other thing to do with this is as you collect gifts from friends there will be achievements in here uh, to claim gifts from friends and that is retrospective so by the time you do actually get an ascended hero you will have more of these coins to go ahead and summon more furniture along with all the extra diamonds dust and blue stones that you get along the way next up we have the wish list now Keep in mind, this is talking about sort of min maxing playing optimally. If there's just a hero you enjoy and you enjoy playing a game by collecting heroes that you like, that is completely cool too. But those that are really trying to push progress, the wish list is a very important thing to not just put random heroes. There's a set, there's a good set of heroes for each faction. I'm not going to go too deep into it in this video. I do have a video that covers it completely. And as the game progresses and we get more heroes, I do update that video. So I'll try and keep updating this video so in the description there'll be one that talks about wishlist heroes um, and basically that'll be up to date so if you want to go check that out find the wishlist it's pretty basic but generally in light bearers we're just going to say Rowan, Lucius and Rosaline are very key for early game uh, in the Maulers Sophia is the really key one there um, and then basically this wishlist of Wilders is basically the staple one that everyone goes for and then down in Graveborn uh, we've got Damon in the middle there uh, Izal to the right of him. Then we've got Nara and also Pharrell. And normally early game players are going to be looking at Shamira for a carry. So that will be the final one. But like I said, if it does change, you can check out the video in the description and stay up to date with that. And on the topic of summoning, we have the Stargazer room. Now the Stargazer, you can select a hero. For me, the top two heroes that you want to Stargaze for are Taylene and also the Twins. They're just absolutely fantastic heroes, good all throughout the whole game and will really help you. They're Celestial and Hyper Genes, which means they're harder to get. Something you never, ever, ever want to do in my opinion is summon a hero from one of the normal factions from Stargazer. Just completely not worth it, never do it. Something else I would recommend against is summoning for Flora, Wukong, Athalia, and Aziz. Now, some people may summon for Aziz because they're really desperate to finish him because he's really strong, but those are all characters that you can get from the shops, so you can already get them free to play. So you want to go for Celestial Hypergenes that are not Aziz, Flora, the, uh, the Wukong, or the Athalia. And like I said, Twins and Taylene are both really, really strong options. I personally think I'd go for Taylene first. Some people would go for Twins, but they are definitely the two you want to stargaze for first. And the topic of actually stargazing, if you're free to play especially, you're not going to be stargazing till a lot later. However, you do get tickets from uh, stargaze tickets from some events um, and through the faction towers. So those are the ones you want to target there. But as for actually spending diamonds, that's a whole nother video in itself. In general, for free to play especially, it's better to just stick to normal summons. But that is the stargazer. Just please, please do not summon these. 
please. It, it, it burns when you see the text pop up the top that someone's summoned a normal hero from Stargazer. Don't do it. The next and probably the biggest mistake players make is not clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. But <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You can dislike it. I'm cool with it. It's okay. But I'm get, I, I am getting onto something community now there's a bunch of other great youtubers doing afk arena content um you've got guys like linker very hippo you've got the soviet gaming um you've got nero a bunch of other guys that do content i'll leave a link to all their youtube channels in the description you can check them out you might find someone that you like more than me and you can get better information off of also reddit um reddit is a fantastic resource for this game there's especially two guys right now that i really look at very closely and that is shazam and white sushi putting out some great visual posts they're very knowledgeable and analytical so if you get deeper into the game definitely worth checking out reddit as well and hopefully then you don't have to listen to me as much Next up, we're going to look at the store in general. We're going to go through all the stores and talk about, talk about things you might want to buy. So in the top left, there's always going to be some dust there that's going to cost you gold to buy. That is definitely great value. You want to buy that every time. Um, then if we go down here to the bottom, the other one that I've purchased, Pocoins, once you unlock the oak in, you will eventually start seeing these down there for gold cost. Those are really good value too. Uh, the dust is the most important one though. If you're low on gold, you can give the Pocoins a miss. And then down in the bottom left, we do do have the purple um, signature item upgrades and sometimes there are gold ones there both costing gold those are okay value you don't have to buy them they're not necessary uh, but if you're struggling to upgrade some signature items they're not the worst thing to purchase if you need to and then sometimes in the other three slots up the top you will see um, some purple stones uh, used for summoning elite heroes at a cost of about 90 uh, diamonds I think early game they might be up around 100 diamonds because you do get discounted up to 40 percent but those are definitely worth a purchase as well moving into the guild store now the guild store is where you get gear and basically you just don't want to spend guild coins at all there is a weekly quest that says um, buy something from the guild store you can complete your weekly quests without doing that one so you really the whole early game you do not want to spend any guild coins at all until you start seeing mythic furniture uh, mythic sorry mythic gear in here which is the the red gear and that is what you want to start purchasing now these ones at the top you can see they don't have a faction they will get a random faction or stay factionless after you buy them so you can't select the faction so you just gotta have pot luck and see how you go um, ideally, you want to focus on your main carry damage dealer first when you start getting these. Um, and in the bottom row, you can see that we have one with a dimensional symbol. Um, those are going to be specific to the dimensional heroes if you have any of them. Um, but definitely, I'd work on your normal carry heroes first. They're the most important because as you can see, the dimensional ones are very expensive. So wait until you've got like a core team built before you do that but definitely don't buy anything else from the store until you see mythic gear you will eventually as well start seeing upgrade items that look like this for tier one and this for tier two those are also very valuable to pick up they're going to up enhance that mythic gear that you already have now onto the barracks uh we i just pick up these the purple stones from here um Got to got to have a shot at getting those elite heroes. You can get Celestials and Hyper Genes from them. So definitely that's what I pick up there. Labyrinth Store. Uh, basically, early game, especially free-to-play, Shamira is a great option as a main carry. After that, I'd lean into uh, doing Arthur and then Wukong. Those two are the best two after Shamira. And if you're not using Shamira as a main carry, you can go straight for Arthur and Wukong as well. They're both fantastic heroes that will really help you late game. Um, so that is definitely the main options that I go for there. Once again, same thing. If you just have a hero that you want to have fun with, go nuts if you like. And then over in the Challenger store, basically the number one choice for me here even though he costs more is going to be aziz now aziz is just absolutely fantastic in the game an absolute beast so he's definitely the one to go for athali is good but just she requires a heavy amount of investment to become really good um but aziz is the one i would definitely target here and if you're going for aziz you don't really have to worry about your next option um until you're really experienced in the game because it will take you a long time to get him ascended so basically he's the main target there once again if there's something you want to have fun with go nuts now i wanted to look at the upgrading of gear now any gear that's not mythic 
I don't upgrade past three stars. I normally try and avoid upgrading them at all. As you can see, all my legendary plus gear, um, the yellow gear and the purple gear, all that stuff I have not upgraded at all. And then once you start getting the mythic gear, there's two little rules with the mythic gear. For me, if it has a faction, I'm happy to upgrade it, especially early on. So for instance, my Shimira, I don't have a Graveborn specific specific staff um, because if you are on faction you do you get a 30% stat bonus um, but because it has a faction I'm cool with it I'll go ahead and upgrade it anywhere four to five stars if it does not have a faction at all it's really bad only upgrade to three star and I'm only talking if that's like one of your first like five or six pieces after that if it's factionless I just completely leave it because those pieces are not good because you can't even re-roll. As you can see with this piece here, I can reset it. I can use these scrolls to re-roll the stat and try and get a better stat for it. However, it is celestial. There are some good celestials that I will eventually equip it to. So that is the general rule. Any gear, you try and avoid upgrading at all. Level three at an absolute max for anything from blue, red, and yellow. We'll just use colors because it's easier. And then once you get into this red mythic gear, factionless, three star tops leave it there um, and then anything with a faction you can start pumping up to five star but also try and level them evenly um, don't get one piece up to five star and then be stuck not being able to upgrade the other pieces um, try and go i try and go three star three star three star three star first because it does get expensive with gold and you have to feed them other gear uh, and then eventually go four star four star four star and then five 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 that is the general progression i go with it especially when you first start unlocking it much later in the game you can probably just pick up a piece and upgrade it all the way but that is gear next up is one that i'm still a little bit torn on um some people think it's a good idea some things people think it's a bad idea i've been burnt by it uh so i just want to talk about it so basically when we go into heroes we go to portraits anything in ascended tier heroes you can see up the top those guys are all the ascended tier they can get to ascended 240 anyone in the legendary tier you summon these guys as blue heroes and they're basically capped at 160 and they are just fodder heroes so what we're going to talk about is feeding ascended tier heroes to upgrade other heroes so if i went like something like this uh that is feeding ascended tier heroes to ascend a hero and i do not like doing that i only like using the fodder tier heroes to do this the reason being these guys are much harder to summon they're much more usable at end game and if you feed them even if they seem like a bad hero for instance rain over here on my main account she was horrible for forever she was horrible i fed a bunch of copies of her uh, to upgrade my other heroes faster and then they just buffed her recently and now she's really good so that is the reason i try not to do it but if there's a hero you really don't like or you just think no nah, i'm never going to use them anyway even if they get a buff you can feel free to do it however just remember it might come back to bite you like it did for me and rain i'd really love to build her on my main account now um, and i've probably fed about six copies along the way and i need eight to get her ascended so that is something i definitely avoid doing is using using ascended tier heroes as fodder it will take you a little bit longer to get there with your heroes however i like having the options later on but once again if you're just really desperate to ascend something and you you're happy to take that hit if it happens it's up to you the next one may sound a bit strange but it's being social in the game not actually being social just partaking in the social parts of the game the first one join a guild i know some people are really strange i got some friends that like i don't want to join guilds i don't want to be you can just join a random pug guild that you can auto accept into because you really need to to be able to get into guild hunts to get guild points and also the twisted realm to get yourself the twisted essence so you're really going to want to get into a guild to do that even if it's just a casual guild where you don't talk to anyone definitely get into it and then also you want to fill out your friends list so you can send and receive uh, friend points so that you can do summons with those friend points every day um, really important to get into the other thing is the first point that we talked about with the oak in how you can visit friends you can't do that if you don't have any friends so make sure you get involved in guilds and fill out your friends list just so you can maximize your currencies throughout the game because you will really struggle especially if you don't have a guild next up i wanted to look at the resonating crystal so as you can see here my top five leveled heroes all go up here and then every other hero down the bottom gains the level of the lowest level hero 
in that crystal. So really important that you only ever need to level five heroes. If you've accidentally leveled, some accounts I jump on and they've actually leveled and you can tell which ones are leveled because they have the white writing and everyone else that's in the crystal has the blue writing. So if you've accidentally leveled more than the five heroes, what you can do is you can jump over here to the rickety cart. It's gonna cost you 20 diamonds. This is the easiest way to see it because as soon as you come here, you can see I've only got five heroes. If I had anyone else leveled, for instance, if I put one level into this one, for instance, I can come over here, I can go to the rickety cart. You'll see that there's that one hero with extra levels uh, and you can just come in here and click reset and that's gonna refund you. It's gonna cost you 20 diamonds, but it's gonna give you back all the gold, all the um, experience, everything, and then you can put it into your other heroes. Just don't level more than five heroes, please. And as you go along, if you ascend something higher than something else and it, its level can go higher, you can always reset the lower hero and then boost up the other one. So it's all good, only level five. Continuing on with the topic of heroes and investment, don't make too many legendary heroes. This is the key. Now, I don't like to make a hero legendary unless I, I have the copies of them to get them to legendary plus. So for those that don't know, to get to legendary plus, you're gonna need a hero at legendary plus two copies or an elite plus copy of them to get there. So I see a lot of people getting an elite plus like this Soros here, he's at elite plus, feeding some fodder, getting him to legendary, then they'd go to this Tassie, make her legendary, um, then maybe this Nomura and make her legendary. The problem with that is you're wasting fodder to get all these guys to legendary when you could have used that same fodder to get one of them straight to mythic and have a really powerful single hero for your team and that is much more important early on in progression having us having a few strong heroes as you can see here i've got my shimira ascended i've got my lucius ascended and i've got my brutus ascended now those are the main ones that i'm working on with my team and then i have my Lyca here at um at mythic that now that I've done my first Graveborn in Shimira and uh, my first Lightbearer in Lucius, now I'm working on my next Lightbearer and Graveborn, which is going to be my Rowan down here and also my Pharrell. So those are the next ones I'm doing. Once I get those guys to Mythic Plus or Ascended, then I'm going to shift and move on to my next hero. So I try not to work on too many of the same faction. I just leave the rest at Elite Plus, being purple with the little gold symbols on the corners, and then once I finish the previous hero of that faction, I move on to them. There will be some other cases where I do uniquely build two at the same time, but in general, I work on one from each faction at a time, and that's it, because I don't want to waste those resources in getting the other ones to Ascended. The next thing I want to touch on, it goes in hand in hand with being in the social as well, and that is friends mercenaries. Now, I still forget to do this every week, but weekly, you can recruit a friends mercenary. I can't remember what chapter it actually unlocks, but it will give you a tutorial to let you know you've unlocked it when you do. And what you can do is you can go into your friends list, uh, you can select any hero that you want, and you can say apply, and as long as that person sees it, they can accept, lend that hero out to you, and you can use it in campaign and tower, uh, which you are limited to one or two uses depending on whether you've bought the um, the subscription. And then also you can use them in Labyrinth, you can use them in Peaks of Time, you can use them everywhere and the labyrinth and peaks of time they're not limited to where you, how much you can use them so it's really nice to pick up a mercenary to help you bust through a wall that you're stuck at in campaign or tower but also make your life in the labyrinth and the peaks of time much easier and now the final mistake that i see people making is using these resources too soon so basically these resources are calculated the amount you get is dependent on the campaign stage that you are at so if you just use these as you get them you might not get the effective use that you need out of them so what i like to do is save them until i need them to reach a break point for instance here if we look at my Lyca. Unfortunately, she's not at the ascension level required, but if she was um, at the ascension level required, actually, we can look at my Brutus here. He's a perfect example. He, I'm at 12k dust. I need 25k to be able to break him past level 180. So to be able to do that, I can go here, I can go to my bags, and I can calculate. I can look at this. This is going to give me an extra 2,200. This one's going to give me an extra 1,700, and this one's going to give me an extra 5,000. So five, plus two, let's say, plus another two. 
that's only going to give me 9,000. And 9,000 plus 12,000 is not quite going to get me to that point of the 25,000 that I need. So I will not use those yet because what will happen is I will be able to progress further in the campaign. And by the time I do that, once I calculate that using these will get me to 25,000 dust, that is when I will use them and that, that will push me past that wall that I am stuck at. Now, some people do hold on to these infinitely, which I don't think is a good idea because I feel like the progress gains you're going to get from increasing your heroes um, is going to outweigh the saving forever because you can get faster progress through the campaign and stuff like that but definitely don't just pop them for instance if i pop them now i'd be sitting at like 21k dust i'd progress through the campaign and it will have just basically lost me resources so don't be wasting those resources unless you really need them. Uh, same with gold. I just, I never pop gold unless I'm gold broke and I need it. And then same with experience. Maybe if I pushed that Brutus past that break point, I might pop a bit of experience if I thought boosting his levels right now would help me out. But basically, don't just be popping these whenever you get them because they are dependent on your campaign level. So that is going to be it for the mistakes in the game to avoid. If you have any other glaring mistakes that you've made or you think people might make, please leave them in the comments. Uh, if I see enough good ones, I will make a pinned comment with any extra things that people do mention. But hopefully that can point you in the right direction. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.